this is uh, the, uh, <clears throat> the ACO report, police report of incident on May 4th, 2017 at 1234. Uh, brown and white female Keating Walker Pound Louise, uh, owner Bobby Joe Pippen at uh, 27 Melinda Lane. This dog hearing is for the purposes of reviewing the recent animal control officer and police reports of an incident concerning that um, Bobby Joe Pippen aunt, uh, tree walker hound Louise, which is a female. Uh, Louise was leased at the time of the incident while being walked by a professional dog walker. The victim was a uh, chinchilla named Phoebe and the owner is Jennifer Toon, who has requested this hearing. The chinchilla did not survive. Um, Ms. Toon has requested that the selectmen hear the reports of this incident and order that Louise wear a muzzle at all times in the future when being walked in the neighborhood. Um, all parties who pl plan on giving testimony in the hearing must be sworn in at the opening of the dog hearing under the provisions of Chapter 140, Section 157 of the General Laws. And, uh, Sabrina, can you, uh, Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Will all those in attendance this evening who plan to give testimony in this matter please rise? Mm -hmm. Would you please state your name? Bobby Jacob and Art. Jennifer Toon. Alice Fairclaw. Will you spell Fairclaw? F is in Frank. A I R C L O U G H. Thank you very much. Nicholas McKay. Nicholas Lutz. McKay. McKay. Okay. Thank you very much. Now we remain standing. I'm sorry about that. Do you solemnly swear that the statements you will make this evening will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Yes. I do. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. Who is the dog officer here tonight? He is not here yet. Okay. Um, Chief, do you have uh, a report on this incident? I do. I just uh, got off the call with uh, Mr. Hardy. Should you be here momentarily? Okay. Um, can we hear from the uh, victim of the incident that uh, took place? Please come up, uh, just state your name and, uh, and kind of tell us what happened. Good evening. My name is Jennifer Toon. Thank you for uh, hearing me. Um, I'm a little nervous, never done this before, and it's also very upsetting for me, so please excuse me if I cry or get upset. Um, this is my mother, Alice Fairclough. We live in our family home on Melinda Lane. Um, on May 4th, I was called at work by my father, Kevin Fairclough, who did not witness the incident. Um, that my dog, Phoebe, who was actually a Chihuahua Terrier, <laughs> not a chinchilla. Oh, okay. Or, <laughs> yeah, she was a six pound, full grown, five year old uh, Chihuahua. Tell you, long coat. Uh, I was informed that she was killed by the neighbor's dog. I wasn't. Sh I knew of the neighbor's dog. I just didn't know um, the breed of the dog. So I was informed that one of the animals had killed Phoebe while my mother was walking her. Phoebe and my mom took the, um, a walk once a day. Um, she was a little little thing. So we only walked her in the neighborhood between once and twice a day, depending on how she felt she had little legs. And it was always on a leash and a harness. And uh, she, we never walked her in the rain, cold, or snow, because she hated it. <laughs> so I will let my mom take over, because I was not there on the incident and how it happened. But my mom was there, and she can take over from here and what happened. And then I will continue what I have to say after that. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, as I told the police, the report, I was coming back with Phoebe from the walk. I was coming back down the street towards Melinda Lane from the from uh, Victoria Lane, and the dog walker had two dogs. One was the Louise, and the other one was the brown dog. Um, 
the two dogs started barking at each other, Phoebe and, and Louise. Louise was coming towards us. We were going that way. All of a sudden, Louise lunged at Phoebe, came right at Phoebe, no leash, and attacked Phoebe. I started screaming to the dog walker, get him off her. I didn't know Louise was a female at that time. I didn't check the book. Get him off her, get him off her. Because I could see that Louise was really attacking Phoebe. And it was a shock to me. I had never seen anything like that before. I have seen dog fights. Gentlemen, this was not a dog fight. This was an attack, a vicious attack on a little tiny dog. I'm sorry. I was screaming. The dog walker, I didn't know his name at the time. He seemed just shocked, just shocked. The only way he could grab Louise was by the collar or by her the scrump of her neck, which he tried once, wasn't successful, and Louise lunged at Phoebe again. I tried to get Phoebe when he first tried to get her off of Phoebe and was not successful. Second time he was successful. There was no leash on Louise. So the only way he could grab Louise was by the scrub. As soon as I could, I grabbed Phoebe and I ran. Ran as far as I could home. And I screamed for my husband and we raced her to, to the vet. But the, unfortunately, my daughter has what, what, what happened point? to her. Is she has a vet report. Okay. Phoebe was bleeding all over me. They couldn't, they couldn't save her. Now, I was there in the street. I, I totally disagree with the dog officer's report. What he said, I did not tell the police. The dog officer did not follow up with me because I was I was in shock when I was at the police station. I'd never seen anything as vicious as this before in my life. And I'm over 60 years old. I've never seen anything like this before in my life. And I was shocked and I'm still upset by it. I cannot even walk down Victoria Lane because it just reminds me. This attack was vicious, vicious and cruel. And I had I had seen Louise being walked by by her owner many times up and down that street, and every time that dog saw Phoebe. It would bark and bark and strain at the leash. Okay, you, you want to read the, um, is, that, is that all I am? Well, that's all. All, all okay. I ask, I can't bring Phoebe back. Yeah. All, all I ask is that when, the, when the Louise is out in public, to please have a muzzle on her. Okay. Because no animal deserves what Phoebe comes with. what she with. went through. No. Yeah. No dog. She was in pain. No animal. <coughs> Large or small. Yeah. She was in such pain. Yeah. I understand that. Do we hear the uh, medical report uh, from the vet? This is from, I only have one copy, but you will see in exam findings what they did. They worked on her for 15 minutes, gentlemen. Okay. 15 minutes. Her trachea was torn. Her torso area and stomach area was full of puncture holes. She was bleeding. When I had to pick up my dog, I rushed from Brockton is where I work, to Hanson Animal Hospital. They were on a second towel so that I wouldn't see the such blood that came from my poor animal. 
My husband had, I had to wait for my husband to come from Rockland to be with me and he was just as devastated and he can't be here tonight because he's working late and wouldn't make it in time. I got Phoebe as a wedding present three years ago from my husband. He got her from his hometown Rhode Island through a private uh, foster and because I've never owned a dog, I've always been around dogs, cats, large, small. I've even, in my field that I work uh, I've even done um, service dogs with pit bulls, and they were kinder than this dog was to my animal. I've seen pit bulls with kittens and other dogs, and I just couldn't believe the horror I saw. And because of the free she is, her little eyes would close, and her ears would stay, like, they would flood down, they were up, because of the nature she died. Now in this um, report, I have a lot of concerns from the dog officer. We were treated poorly. I had to call him several, several times, and he wouldn't answer. I leave messages. He, he maybe from the almost two months we're in this now, maybe I talked to him twice. I may have been harsh on the phone because I am devastated. I treated her like I treat my own son. We treat our animals with love and respect and kindness and give them everything we can, as I'm sure other an um, owners of animals do. Okay, this was not a dog fight. That is an untrue statement in this, uh, op in this uh, dog officer's report. It was a vicious attack. There are several uh, things that I... And also, I'd like to say, I know I was not there, but my mother was there. Also, when I got to near my home, in front of Bobby Joe's, Bobby Joe's home, there was a police officer, and he asked my husband and I to, you know, stay at our home, and he'd come talk to us. And we were very upset. We said we want the dog taken, we want the dog destroyed. We were very, very upset because I just came from the animal hospital where they said my dog's trachea was torn. That's devastating to hear. And I and he said we had to go wait. So I waited, and the dog, the um, police officer told me that Bobby Joe was not home in the time of the incident. That the dog walker had called her to come home because of the incident that happened. And in this dog officer's report, it says she saw my dog Phoebe go behind her dog Louise and, and sniff her, so to speak. Let me tell you something, gentlemen. Phoebe was a six-pound Chihuahua who was always shaking. She never, ever, ever went up behind dogs. She would bark at a dog because that's nature. Dogs bark at each other. But I can tell you right now, we always had her by our side on the She never just went up to a dog to sniff it. Because even some of the um, dogs we are friendly with on Victoria, um, um, we made sure you come in contact first to sniff. And then she'd keep friends with them. Even one time I came into contact with Louise, with I believe his name's Randy, and they've sniffed before. Now, if his dog, Louise, didn't like small dogs or small animals, why didn't he tell me at that point in time? Why? I would. I would. I'd be like, I'm sorry, you know, you know she really doesn't like small dogs. But I would make sure 100 times percent any time they walked the door, we didn't walk our door, we would wait. Or vice versa. Okay? She was not home. She did not see this. That's an untrue statement. The ones that were there were my mother and this dog walker, Nicholas, okay? Um, I don't know what the laws are, uh, state to state, town to town. But at first, my husband and I want the dog put down. But I understand there are laws in each town and each state that run different from others. I know this instances that have to happen probably until it gets to that point. But if you, you know, find that is not the case, then I want this dog muzzled. Now, I heard that this town does not have a muzzle law. And is that a true statement? Well, I don't know whether we have a muzzle law, but does the Board of Selectmen have a right to impose whatever <laughs> that they see deem necessary mm -hmm. uh, in the town to make it safe for anybody to be walking the street? Right. And, and we do have a lease law. Um, but let us hear from everybody, and uh, the Board will take everything out of consideration, and we'll We'll do what's best for, for everybody on this incident. We, 
uh, you know, feel bad that you lost your dog. Uh, I'm sure. My, I'm sure. I, I had to bury my dog before my son came home because yeah. her eyes were open. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put my 11 year old through that or any child. Yeah. Or to see her still even bleeding at that point in time. Mm -hmm. I'm a dog lover of all animals. I really am. But this dog right here, it deserves to be muzzled. Big time. What if this was a child, gentlemen? There's children on our street that ride their big wheels, their bikes, little <coughs> uh, motorized scooters. Those are all things that we take into consideration, believe me. And, and when my child, again, when it comes to the school year, when I, I informed him not to go near these dogs. No. And if he sees the dogs coming, he will be on the way. So on, so on. But thank yeah. you. I okay. just want to uh, say that um, the other dog, the brown one, was not involved in this incident, which I told the police. No. That that dog was not a part of this incident. Only, only the dog named Ruiz was. Okay. But I I do ask at least for some kind of muzzle law. Oh, the muzzle this animal. It really needs to be muzzled. And I, I, I'm sorry, in my opinion, um, this dog had to have attacked before. Okay, whether it was they owned them, the dog, or before they adopted the dog. This dog does this on all of a sudden, just decide I'm going to attack an animal. It had to have in the past somehow, some way. Okay. okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Is there anybody else who was here that day? Uh, Mr. Yeah. Chairman? Yes. Yeah. Just want to let the folks know that uh, once they speak, uh, everyone will have their chance. To speak, and, and there the, the will be and should be a dialogue afterwards. So, uh, don't feel that if you spoke once and you had something left to offer later on, uh, you can revisit it as long as it's part of uh, the conversation that the chairman allows. Right. Is there anybody else that was there that day? No, that's fine. It was mother. I'm his, I'm his stepmom. He also, his wife. I own a company. Okay. Okay. So, um, um, you could just say your name for the record. Okay. Okay. Um, I have been working with animals for about 10 or 12 years now. I know I'm young. I look young. Um, I started dog training when I was back fifth, sixth grade. Um, I do know a lot of the behaviors that animals uh, do have. Louise specifically is what's called a coon hound. So they are a hunting dog. She did come from the south. Um, they're specifically bred for mostly hunting wild boar and other small animals like that. So the behavior that she exhibited that day was purely out of instinct with the sounds that she was making because they do actually have a tone change between whether they are alert barking to whether they are barking because they see an animal that they want to go after for hunting. Um, the way she was barking and howling is the, the hunting. Grace, the other dog that was with her, started chiming in in the same exact way. So between keeping her calm and trying to keep Louise calm, when I saw um, her walking with her small dog, we were a solid 50 or 60 yards away. They started doing the alert barking. I turned around. She did not. She continued walking towards us. And not only was she walking towards us, but she was also walking faster than we are. Because I had two dogs, both of them not trying to pull towards her, but still looking back, were walking with me. She got within about a 25, 30 yard range. And that's when Louise continued hearing the other dog barking, hit the brakes, slipped out of the collar, and started running towards her and the small dog. Um, and she kept walking straight towards us. Um, then when her dog started being back, that is when I was still running over to try and get Louise again. She, the dogs were at her feet. She had her hands up in the air. She was not screaming, get this dog off of my dog. She was screaming, my dog, my dog, repeatedly doing just that, nothing. Uh, my first attempt to grab Louise was actually successful. It was not unsuccessful like she said it was. And I did separate <clears throat> the dogs. I had to pull both dogs away. Um, pack mentality is an actual thing that can happen. Some people do not see it as something. 
So keeping the other dog calm while securing the set, um, Louise, uh, trying to put her collar back on. She picked her dog up, turned around, and put the dog back down on the ground. About two, maybe three feet away from Louise. And that is when, as I'm trying to put the collar on, holding both dogs, she slipped away from me again and tried going after the dog. Um, I separated them that second time, and that is when she picked the dog up again and she ran down the street. Uh, that entire time, she did nothing to help the situation. This was, again, in my opinion, from what I know, working with animals, completely instinctual. She has never hurt another animal before. She has never hurt a person. And to be honest, she is one of the laziest dogs I have ever met. She usually refuses to do anything, even walk outside of the train. Uh, professional opinion, as far as dogs go, it was a completely avoidable situation. Um, that shouldn't have happened to begin with, and it did because of negligent behavior on the other parties. Um, the muzzle, realistically, not a bad idea. Should it have to be on all the time with her? No, because this isn't a behavior that we are going to usually see out of her, if ever. Um, the sounds that the other dog was making, and again, her being a hunting dog, that is something that is bred into her. And you can't expect every hunting dog that's out there that is not trained from birth to not be a hunting dog to wear a muzzle at all times. Yeah, and that's, I think. I'm sorry, Bobby Joe was home the entire time. Yeah. So I, I think that's something for the for the board of selectmen to consider all of these facts, you know, together. And you know, I appreciate you coming tonight to testify about that. But you also have to assume if this is a hunting dog, you are responsible for those dogs. Correct. You're responsible if they get off of the leashes. You're responsible if that dog attacks another dog. You are totally responsible. For that, Correct. not the other person, just because the dog was barking and walking in your direction, that you are responsible. I so do if, take if, that into consideration. If, I just if you uh, that if you have a dog off. on a leash, it has to be a really good leash so that dog can't get away from you. And but, it was. <coughs> but, you know, otherwise, than that it's, uh, that's that's uh, everybody has a right to walk down a public way and be free from attack and be free from bitten or from anything else and. Uh, we've had enough hearings here in Pembroke to say, well, the dog doesn't do anything at all when it's home. It's a nice dog and lays around. But if it bites somebody or another animal, um, and especially kills it, then there's something wrong somewhere. And it's, it's not just because it's the breed of the dog. Because I've had all different types of breeds of dogs, and my dogs have never bitten anybody or anything. So um, that's, that's just something that we have to consider. But I appreciate that. Your, um, your testimony here today because it, it um, opens a light as to exactly what happened on your side because you were there. So. Is there anybody else who wants to testify in regards to the dog incident that took place that day? Okay, well, I'm, I'm going to have the dog officer get up and testify as to what he investigated and what he found out. <coughs> so if there's any other questions or comments, then we'll, we'll definitely get back to you. Uh, let uh, Bill get up and testify as to what what he did first, and then uh, you have a right to come up and testify. Hello, Jenna. Um, <coughs> Just for those people that don't know who you are, Bill. Oh, okay. I'm uh, William Hart, <laughs> Animal Control for Trump. Okay. Um, she's right as far as I, I didn't go to her house right after the attack, but the only reason why is the neighborhood was, was exploding. Uh, other neighbors that were walking their dogs were all coming out, yelling and screaming in the front yard. We had a cruiser at the house where I was, and we had two cruisers come in afterwards because of the yelling and screaming that was going on. So we were trying to calm the neighborhood down and get things to a, you know, a tone that we could work through. It. And what I did was I took Louise, I explained to uh, the owner of Louise that uh, normally we don't take the dog on the first attack or the first bite. But I took the dog for 10 days as a precaution and to try to calm it, get the neighborhood back into some resemblance so if the neighborhood wasn't being taxed. 
and I took the dog and held the dog for 10 days. I handled the dog for 10 days around people. It's phenomenal. I didn't put her into a situation where if I get a dog from somebody else off the street and I had the dog at the pound, I didn't put her in a situation where I introduced her because it wasn't my place to, to, to you know, put either, either dog at risk. But I will say that around people, the dog is, is phenomenal. I was told that normally the dog is on a collar, I mean on a, um, a harness, sorry about that, on a harness, and that day she was put on a, on a collar. She has a tendency to pull out a collar. Some dogs will do that. They'll, they do it once and they'll do it many times over. It was very unfortunate. But like I said, I, I called him the next day and tried to speak with the, the little dog owner and she was upset she was yelling she wouldn't listen on the phone after i got through talking to her a little bit she hung up and her father called and i talked to him for about 20 minutes on the phone explained everything to him what was going to happen why i held the dog why i was keeping the dog for the 10 days all right then i filled out the incident report after i talked to nicholas and, and to them and what i did was um when I gave the dog back on the 10 days, I recommended that when she'd walk in the dog to make everybody in the neighborhood feel safer, was I recommended that she use a, a, a muzzle on the dog, okay? I didn't impose any, I didn't come to you for a, a, a law on it or a bylaw on it or anything like that. All I did was I asked if they would be willing to muzzle for the protection of Louise, mainly, or any other dogs that were in the neighborhood. And they agreed to it. Problem is, they, I guess they were having trouble finding a muzzle that she wouldn't pull out of or pull out while we were walking. Okay. And it was an unfortunate accident. Is it something that a coon hound will do sometimes? I had two that tried to kill three dogs that came up from down south one, one, uh, one weekend when we had to Friends of the Plymouth Pound in my shelter years ago. Okay. They can be they can be aggressive towards other animals. They're not so much to people, but they can be to other animals, smaller animals like raccoons and, and smaller animals like that. So as far as what uh, Nicholas was saying, it's, it's, it's true. I mean, they can, if they've seen any any type of hunting in, in the future before they came there, they could be a little bit touchy on certain animals. She lives with another dog. So it's not, you know, it's it's it could have been the size, it could have been the noise, it could have been the way he barked. We don't know because none, you know, we're not animals that were there listening to the whole cup you know, the barking that the, the dogs were doing. I, I can take both stories and add them into a paper and give it to you. And I'm getting he said, she said. Um, I did meet uh, this is uh, her, her mother at the police station because she came to the police station for this and the first part of the incident report was generated at the police station and then we went from there to uh, the house and when I talked to her that's when I took the dog for the 10 days but like I said I don't normally take the dog on the first bite or first it, it, anything like that we don't usually do that but because of everything that went on and the severity of it I figured it was pull the dog out of the situation and try to get the neighborhood to calm down a little bit so that they could talk in a, you know, a, a better way. Mm -hmm. That's all I, I tried to do in that one. But I gave her back at the end of 10 and um, with the recommendation, and she'll tell you that I gave her a recommendation that she should, uh, in the future, when she's walking the door, to, uh, to maybe be Muslim, just for its own protection. Okay. Any of those have any questions for Bill Dodd? Yeah, I'd like to ask you, Bill, uh, with the expertise of the dog walking company, uh, I'm a little confused as to why that dog wasn't on a harness in the first place. I can't. I I don't know why um, the gentleman put the collar on instead of a harness because both are right there on the where, where he takes the dog into the garage and gets him ready for a walk. She has a harness right there and she has a collar. I don't know. I really. 
I, that's something that he's going to answer, answer like, not me. So there but was they a do, lot of, yes, was there was a lot of right there. Yeah. The yeah. choice was not to use it. Or maybe he didn't know that he had to use it. Maybe he, you know, maybe he thought it was okay that she wouldn't pull out it. I, I don't know. I, I, I wasn't there at the time that it, uh, that he uh, prepared the two dogs for the walk. Okay. Um, Officer Hart, could you just uh, explain to the board and, and the public, uh, has there been any criminal violations uh, in this incident? I've, I've never ever been to the property before. I was to the neighbors. No, for this specific incident. For this, for this, for this, it, criminally, no. We didn't do. We, I got them cited. I didn't cite the the owner of the dog because. One, it wasn't the owner of the dog that had the dog at the time that the, uh, the bite occurred. It was a walker. Yeah, I didn't so believe again, so either, so yeah, I just wanted to make sure that was stated like said, in this meeting. I, you know, it, it's, it's all recorded, so if anything like this happens again, we can, we can go forth with it if we have to. But I don't, you know, it was, it was one of these things that it was a very, very unfortunate mistake to use the wrong call. If she's never ever showed this propensity before, then he might have just thought it was okay for the call. Mm -hmm. Right, and uh, these dog hearings are very difficult for the board of selectmen. Uh, Any time we hear them, we have uh, you know one or two a year, and uh, because they're so they're so personal, they're so personal to the victim, so personal to the uh, uh, to to the attacking dog owner. Uh, so we, we have to weigh. Uh, both, both sides and, and I know it's emotional for both sides too uh, but it's our it's, it's our duty to, to protect the public uh, and protect the individuals as well so and we take that uh, we take that charge very seriously and we take uh, Officer Hart's uh, recommendations uh, very seriously too and take, take it all in, uh, and formulate our opinion uh, and, and having said that uh, Bill, do you, do you have uh, an, an opinion or recommendation for the board? The, the recommendation that I had was originally was that it would be wise to muzzle during walking Louise only, just because she had the one incident. But uh, you know, the town can't institute a, a bylaw that all dogs in the town have to be muzzled while they walk, just because it was one. Yeah, no, we can't institute if that we feel necessary that the dog is is going to be a harm to other people. Well, I'm saying we about can, the individual we can sure dog make a rule and regulation. If, if, uh, if. Not that we have to make a rule and regulation to say yeah. you can't walk your dog. Yeah. You know, put it in the car and take it someplace else and walk it. I mean, there's a lot of things that we can do. For so. Every dog in the town. No, that's one case. the hearing isn't for every dog. It's for this particular one, and there are things mm -hmm. that the board of selectmen can do. So. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't necessarily have to have a bylaw, mm -hmm. so many of the people are going to agree to it. It's the same with with people dog that bites uh, goes off of their property and bites another dog and tears them apart out in the front lawn somewhere or something. The board of selectmen can make a recommendation that they put up electric fences, that they sure. they put up fences, that they do this or that, or we'll tell them to get rid of the dog. But that was my that. recommendation no. in the first place was that yeah. when Louise is being walked, was the muzzle up just yeah. as a as a precaution, that was. Well, I think it personally myself. I think it needs to go a little bit more than that. But, but uh, that's your recommendation, and that's fine. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, another question for you, Bill. Mm -hmm. uh, your recommendation is, uh, as I understand it, is that when the dog is walked, it be muzzled. Yes. But isn't it also your testimony that the dog can't be continually? muzzle because it gets out of it no 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 i'm talking about while it's being watched otherwise most of the, the rest of the time it's pretty much in the house well i'm not concerned about it being in the house yeah i'm concerned about it when it's being walked right now is there a difference if you muzzle the dog when it's in the house i understand it could be aggravated because it doesn't want to it, be it's, muzzled it's it's, it's 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 also not not wise to muzzle the dog all the time because the dog can't alleviate heat because they pant to alleviate heat right. and to keep themselves cool right. but my question is if the dog gets out of a muzzle in the house yeah 
he doesn't get out of it if he's being walked? He, what she has to do is find the right muzzle that's going to work, that's not going to come off, and then use it while she's walking, not while she's in the house. And if that is your recommendation to the board that that take place, um, are you going to uh, determine what kind of a muzzle is necessary? Well, I, I think she, she'll she tell you that she's tried a couple already and it hasn't, it hasn't she hasn't succeeded in finding the right one. All right, because I did speak to her about it. And, and while we were making the arrangements for the, for the meeting, well, I guess I'm looking for a recommendation from you that is going to protect other neighborhood dogs mm -hmm. when this dog is being walked. Okay. And if your recommendation is that being muzzled would probably do the trick and be on a harness. Mm -hmm. Now you're covering all issues. Right. But we don't know if there's a muzzle that is going to accomplish that. I, I'll have to. We'll have to. I'll have to work with her, with the owner of uh, the Weasley, and we'll have to work together and try to find what it's going to work for. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. All right. Thanks. Okay. You're going to hang around, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Chief, do you have? Do you have? Uh, just one, one second. Chief, do you have anything you'd like to add to this? Uh, okay. Uh, okay, would you want to come up and just state your name for the record and uh, and you are the dog owner? Hi. Okay. Oh, my, my name is Bobby Joe Pagan. Um, First of all, I'd like to apologize for this horrific accident. It was not intentional. That's all I wanted, and you guys never did that. Neither did I, the dog. I, 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 I you never did that. Apology hey. goes a long way, so the morals and respect. Absolutely, but you're screaming at me down the street, yelling profanity at your I wasn't screaming at you, I was talking with my neighbor. Thank you. Uh, we just adjust the board back and forth instead of back and forth with people who are now feeling better. We've lived in the Lily Lane for six years. We adopted these babies about three and a half years ago. Uh, we've had no incidents like this before. Uh, it was an unfortunate situation that she was not on the harness. I can show you a picture if you like of the harness that we do use. Uh, we use it for both of our dogs. And I don't want to say it's virtually impossible to get out of, but. Um, it's not something easily that a dog can slip out of. Just what the dog looks like? No, that's not. I, I just checked so you can see the actual harness itself. So, um, as I said, there have not been many incidences. I was home at the time of the incident. However, I wasn't aware of it until Zach so came in and told me about it. Um, I did, when the police officer came, spoke with him, spoke with Bill. Um, and you know, we, we did the best of what was in the neighborhood, and, and obviously, with Bill and let the dog go. Um, she's generally a very loving dog. I, I do believe that this is a isolated incident. I think that, um, personally, I think I have bought six muzzles on Amazon and tried them all and haven't found the right ones and have made an effort. I do believe that the harness will take care of the bulk of the situation, if not all of it. As I said, she can't get out of that. She cannot get away from the dog walker, who at this time is generally just my husband or myself. Um, I'm not sure that anyone else has walked her since this since this Any questions? I have a question. Yes. Uh, when the dog is at home, do uh, uh, you have a fenced in yard? That we, do. Are, we have an acre that's fully fenced in and secure, and most of the time they're in the yard. Anybody else? You know, first of all, that's the best way to get well, I can just say I'm Kristen McKay. I own the pet sitting company that was invented by him, Zach. I just want to say I've known them for before they got busy with two other dogs. Um, they're great dog parents and um, they're good people. And Yeezy's a sweetheart. I really do feel like Bobby just said it's an isolated incident. 
and a, a very unfortunate mistake. It just it was a very bad accident. And we all felt horrible about it. We were all still suffering from it. Not like the owners and what they went through. Um, but they're, they're good dogs and they wouldn't come and fly. It was just an off the cuff thing. We're all shocked. All shocked. Just dealing with dogs every day, all day. I've never seen something like this from her. We would never expect it. I mean, she's just a sweetheart. So, um, I mean, that's all I have to say. I just I love these people. The great, like I said, the great dog parents never had any issues before. And all and Heather, who works for me as well, has taken care of her as well, and probably did the same thing. So, that's all I want to say. Thank you. Has your company ever experienced something like this before in Pepper? No. So do you have any qualifications that you can and do not walk dogs in Pepper? Um, people have to have experience. Um, they have to be insured and bonded. They have to be able to have had, well, it's, it's hard to explain. I have to be, um, it takes a long time for me to trust somebody because I also have a bond in people's houses with no supervision. And um, it's basically me getting to know them as a person before I hire them. And I knew them for months before I hired them. And they actually, Nancy hired me before I hired her. So, <laughs> um, and then I met Heather through his sister. And she had told me about her experience and everything. <coughs> so, and Karen Price owns Sofa's doggy daycare. I worked for her many years. She's helping find the right people and everything, too. And these three individuals that work for me, um, I, I wouldn't have anyone else. I wouldn't have anyone else. I wouldn't. So, and they just, they know how to handle, especially Nancy. <laughs> she knows how to handle. Um, <laughs> Horses, all kinds of things that you know, they know how to handle those incidents. They know what to do. They have that instinct to turn around if something's coming towards you and get out of the situation, or they know how to defuse the situation. I've broken up dog fights um, between huge dogs before. It's just it's something that you have to know how to do before you can walk a dog because you never know what's going to happen. So, as I'm not a lot, so I don't just know a lot, but um, there's a lot to it. All right, thank you. Anybody else in the Yes, I would like to say, I'm sure Louise is fine with people and bigger dogs. But you didn't see the viciousness. I saw it. I didn't see it. I was there. And I would like you to keep that in mind. As well. This was vicious and it was cruel. And for this young man who's supposed to have all this expertise mm -hmm. to say that I was a fault? Mm -hmm. How dare you? I did not say she was. Alright, 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 alright. Right. She you said it was negligent behavior. Are you a behavior, sir? Young man, are you a dog behaviorist or a dog specialist? I do have training, yes. Please. That's what I mean about getting out of hand. Because if you can address me. Okay, can I address yes. that question, please? Well, I'd yes, like to you, know. You, you if can come right up to the podium here. Please. And, uh, and please address me and not people in the dog. I would like to know, first off, if they are dog behaviorists, dog specialists in dog behavior. That's, I would, that's one question I'd like to know. Okay. So we can ask them, right? And are they licensed? in that expertise. Because I knew, knew a lot of people. Yes, I'm sure they're lovely people. I'm sure they're lovely people with their friends that are on Louise. I have friends as well, okay? That I chose to deal with this with my mother on our own. I could have got a petition from the neighbors because the neighbors on Victoria Lane are furious. And they said that they would sign my petition, but I decided to do this as a nice woman and come before you on my own. Okay? And it really hurts to hear this was an isolated incident. Two dogs coming at each other barking and they get into a quarrel and they bite each other. 
and they separate. That's an incident. This was not an incident. It, it just wasn't an incident. This was calculated vicious dog attack. If you read that report from the Hanson Animal Hospital, my dog's trachea was torn. She was six pounds, gentlemen. That's not a dog fight. And for her to come from 50 yards in, and if there's such expertise, why didn't you probably harness the animal? Especially where they've testified they've been in the business for years. And to say my mother put down a, my dog that was just attacked to be attacked again? Really? Now that's just ignorance in my opinion. I would never, near, nor would she do that. And it wasn't, it, it's just to hear the dog officer say, oh, it's just a dog bite, it's just a dog bite, this wasn't just a dog bite. <coughs> I guess it's hurtful for everybody. But I'm sorry, in instances like this, a specialist needs to come in. Now I understand the town don't have a lot of funding for certain things. But I, I, know, I, do, I do know you do, but in other things. But in, in this case, God forbid if it ever happens to another family, I think the owner should pay for some type of job behavior specialist to come in and really look over the animal. Yes, I'm sure it's good with, you know, grown people and grown adult dogs. Yeah, I'm sure. But what about children? What about other breeds of small dogs? There's, at least that I know of, three other small dogs in our neighborhood, and that calls The neighbors know all about it, and we all watch each other's dog now. My husband and I have purchased another Chihuahua. She's three months old. I won't let her leave the house because I'm afraid that she will be attacked and these type of hounds will smell her scent. And plus she's too small to leave the house. But, I, but even when she's even a year old, I will not walk her in that neighborhood. And my parents have been in that neighborhood over 20 years. I've looked at my parents on and off 15. And that's a good neighborhood. And now, I don't think it is. I, I love the neighbors of Victoria Lane and the two dogs, a husky and a, uh, a brown poodle mix who are Phoebe's friends. They're good dogs and they're large dogs. Thanks. Um, I don't have the answer to this, but Jen, if you would like, would like to know whoever. I am not licensed in animal behavior, but I do have training from multiple sources, um, including actual certifications that were done while working with PetSmart because they do actually have you take certain courses that you have to get qualified in before you can work with any animal, not just dogs. Um, so I do have training and I do have certifications through companies such as PetSmart and certification companies that work with chains such as that's one. Okay. Is, is um, being the company owner, is, are people required to have a license? I didn't no. even realize it would be that way. So no, I don't need a license to support them. Um, you need a license to really get the, like, I, I didn't know that you need a license to work with them. No, but it's a good idea to have um, that dealt with that. Yes, all of these things will be supposed to be. <clears throat> well, uh, I'm going to listen to my board members, but I'd like to make a recommendation first. Uh, I'd like to continue this hearing uh, for a period of 60 days. And between that 60 days, uh, I would like you to, to pick the time of day that you would walk your dog. And it be done by one person. That would really have one person on two dogs. Uh, so that if you can watch that dog and watch that dog by itself, that it would have a leash in the pass. And, uh, and I would think that the board would take this under advisement and I would like to talk to some other people about this before. And it was home in the city. Yes, in other words, if you have, if you have a dog walk, <coughs> we don't have a dog walk. I'm asking about my husband. Okay. No one else is walking the dog at this time. 
Okay, so you're just going to be doing this yourself? For now, yes. So if, if he can't pull the dog by himself, the two dogs? You be my husband? No. The He's not, but that's my point. Zach's not walking the dog. My husband and I are the only two walking the dog at this point. And you're saying, you're so I'm just asking you're going to say to the board that, that both of you can guarantee you watch both of those dogs. Um, Together, <coughs> you can handle both dogs. There's no guarantees in life, but I can guarantee that we haven't had any other incidents like this in my husband or I. So, no, I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I've never done anything in the past, but what I'm trying to say is we need to make sure that, that the public is going to be safe from the other hand. So, if you agree to that, then uh, I think that you know, in the next 60 days, you should also work so it and maybe put the muzzle on it. That may be the end result of what I'm saying here. Well, I don't know why it's going to be done with the This is up to the point. Um, I would say that we don't make the decision tonight. Uh, put it out for 60 days. In the meantime, uh, you try to work with the dog out. So, you can get any positive for the dog. It doesn't need one at home by himself because you don't have that problem. You also have a fancy pad, so. Uh, and you pat up that in there that the dog is over the attic and you can be posted to the inside of the fencing area so that you can buy it right now. I think it will give the board a little time to consider it until the moment and you talk to some other people about all of us and then make a decision in 60 days. In the meantime, we want to make sure that things are safe for everybody. Thank you. Could you clarify uh, what around? So to be clarified, your recommendation to the board, so the board can do the motion and take a vote. Spell it out. First of all, first of all, um, I'd like you to pick a time of day that you can notify the neighbors that you're going to be watching the dog. So you would like us? We walk our dog when husband leaves by six fifteen in the morning, typically. So the dog is walked between five forty and six ten, and then occasionally we walk her at night when we get home, which usually isn't until after seven p.m. So is there any way that you can notify all of your neighbors that, that you're going to walk the dog between a certain time of day? That's what I'm saying. I don't care when you walk it, but if, if the neighbors know that you're going to walk your, your dog every day at 6.15, then the neighbors know you're going to be walking your dog at 6.15 in the morning. Okay. So they're not okay. expecting the dog to be out okay. there at 10 o'clock or 12 o'clock. Yeah. So Who do you expect us to notify? People on Wendelay? Yes. Okay. Um, and that uh, the dog will probably be leashed because they have a leash lot. Um, probably put that harness on yeah, the dog also. Yeah. And, um, and then we're going to go back on the muzzle. That way, that way here, um, we're going to cover all the bases and make sure that the things are safe to do. And we give them more time to look into this a little more to decide what the end of the dog wants to be. Mm -hmm. I think 60 days is plenty of time for us to also to make sure that you're going to be compliant with what's going on. So. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Well, I, I don't know if you've accomplished anything by uh, taking the uh, here from you, sending it out to the region. We have enough to go on uh, here and uh, make a decision so that the neighbors and the dog owners and the former owner of the uh, chihuahua, uh, you know, can, can move on. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 you know, it's up to to lose a bet. And we are, my wife and I have an eight pound Chihuahua Terry mix, oddly enough. And uh, I just think it ain't time to the rule. But, uh, uh, but I think, you know, the, the, uh, the owners have come forward, they seem to uh, be amenable to the muzzle and so forth. I think any other action, you know, beyond that is, is a civil matter. Uh, so I'll hold the motion for the uh, for now, so we can get our ministry. I think we can uh, we can close up here. Uh, you know.
to you know, kind of heal the neighborhood a little bit. You know, now we think it will bring the dog back, and that's very difficult uh, and emotional thing to deal with. So I'll hold the motion and uh, put the Sure. Uh, I've heard all the testimony here today on both sides, and I appreciate Officer Hart's uh, contribution as well. And, uh, again, I reiterate these hearings are always difficult because they're always so personal, so emotional. Uh, and we understand that. Um, we feel for we feel for, for both sides. And, uh, Especially the victim side because it's uh, it hurts first them the most. Uh, but we look at it; it's not just uh, two dogs. You know, we have a whole neighborhood that, that we want to protect as well, and and uh, set a key precedent because it's not the first one. This happens; uh, it, it happens on occasion. So uh, this board is experienced in these cases, and we know how to. Uh, how to take both sides of consideration and come to a fair, balanced, and, and uh, decision that protects the, the, the bodies. And, uh, and Arthur, uh, and uh, you have a motion that you're holding, but just to uh, uh, clarify a couple of things that I've heard from Bill that I, I'd like to make sure that are in there as well, uh, that I feel, I feel strongly about. Uh, not that you need to notice out to the neighborhood, uh, but just the, the general knowledge through, a mo through our motion that the neighborhood knows that uh, somewhere around 6 a.m. before work, the dog will be walked, and somewhere around 7 p.m. after work, after work, the dog will be walked uh, in general. Uh, uh, then keep the dog fenced in while at home. Uh, uh, always have a full harness uh, on the dog. The dog will be walked singly by one person, not two dogs at once, uh, and the dog will have a muzzle on. Now we can consider the uh, the muzzle for a 60-day period and revisit it. Uh, <clears throat> it. It may be that the dog does not have to be muzzled after 60 days, but certainly for a 60-day period, uh, I feel comfortable. I hope the neighbors would feel comfortable with that as well. Uh, even in, in the beginning of meeting, there, while the dog's being walked, even if he has a tendency to get out of a muzzle that you haven't found the perfect one. Uh, can't get out of it if you're walking in or her. Uh, so uh, the muzzle will be immediate and find the right fit for, for the future. Uh, so those are some of the things that, that I've had in mind and uh, I hope they, they speak to what some of the things that Bill thought of and some of the things that you might bring up promotion. Uh, before I would vote on that motion, I would like to, if I may, ask uh, Mrs. Toon, who is the owner of the dog that has suffered this horrific loss, if we were to vote, you've heard some of the issues we've been discussing that we are going to put forth in conditions so that uh, the dog always would have to uh, have done before it can be put out on the street to have a walk. How does that sound to you? As he said, this still is a sore subject, but I prefer the, that the muzzle be a permit thing. Um, it's just something, in my opinion, that this dog has done something like this before. Maybe before they, you know, adopted her. It's, it just, I feel like it should have a muzzle all the time. I really do. Because, gentlemen, what if this happens again? Then what? I'm not saying it will. I'm not saying it won't. But what if it does? Then what? Then what's the next step if God forbid this happens to another animal? <clears throat> then what's the next step? If you just put a muzzle on for 60 days, are they going to promise this will never happen again? But they can't promise that. You don't know what a dog will do. You don't. And as everybody has testified, she won't even stay in one. <laughs> How, 
you know, I just, there's just so many things that are going through my mind. And I really feel that some type of dog behaviors, especially, should really examine the animal. Especially with small dogs. I, I'm not saying put another small dog at risk, God forbid, no. But these dog walkers are not dog behaviorists. And I've worked with them with service dogs with pit bulls. Pit bulls. So yes, I've read everything about the coon hound, tree walker hound, whatever the dog it is. But I'm sorry, muzzles should be the perfect thing for this dog. Anytime it's out in the community. It really should. Because there's a lot of kids in that neighborhood too. Thank you. Uh, I think we're probably on the right track that uh, that dog could be walked in the certain times by the owners for now. And the dog was the other house. The dog should have a muzzle, but it's outside the block. And that uh, should continue to investigate to get the proper muzzle. Because what we're looking at here is a horrific accident that occurred. And we're being asked to come up with a solution to prevent this in the future. So I would agree with uh, Mrs. Turner that when the dog is out being parked, it must have a house and it must have a mother. That's my opinion. I would agree that that the dog should have a muzzle while he's being walked, and, and the owner has said that, that they have tried different puzzles and it hasn't worked. And that's why I put the 60 day um, rule on that, not to continue the hearing and uh, not for people to uh, not start to heal and go on from here. But like Lou says, this is a very horrific thing for the people who lost the dog. Sure that the owners of the dog that did the damage is feels pretty bad about it also that their dog did something like that. Uh, and also my dog, I would feel that way also. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, sometimes you just don't have total control of your dogs. Uh, dogs do things that you don't want them to do. So <coughs> I thought at least by uh, I know the 60 day rule would give you time to work with the dog off to recover the problem. Uh, I agree that the dog should be muzzled now, but put a muzzle on the dog now and pull on yourself. But, but uh, if it's not going to work and the, and the dog can still play with not having a proper muzzle, then uh, I, I just want to give you a little time to get the proper one. And once you have a proper one, when you dog in 60 days, you make it up your if you're going to walk the dog in the neighborhood, then you, know, you have to put a muzzle on it. If you took the dog to the beach or something and you didn't put a muzzle on it, that didn't, it wouldn't affect the You can't say, you can't take a dog to the beach and where it comes the boost down there. They have their own rules down there, but while it didn't come over around the neighborhood, we need to protect the neighbors. Uh, so, we set the motion for some reason. I'll make one if that's all right. Um, you know, and it, it's clear that there was no malice or, or anything. You know, there was nothing done intentionally in this instance. I think everybody that's involved feels terrible about it. And, uh, you know, no matter what we do, it's not going to undo the harm. But I would move that we uh, close the hearing and continue for 60 days. Uh, that the dog can always be muzzled and harnessed at any time she's uh, being walked up on the street. Uh, that they maintain a fence in the yard for their uh, dog to uh, run a uh, private property. And that uh, they, uh, through, the, you know, through the selections offices of social media or through cable TV, however you want to do it, I don't expect to walk through the door. <coughs> But let the 
neighbors be on notice that they will walk the dog between 5.30 and 6.30 a.m. and again at 7 to 8 p.m. in the evening and one dog to one dog walker. Second. Just clarify the uh, balance when motion to second. Just clarify uh, uh, the 60 day uh, city after. Yeah, if there's nothing that happens in 60 <coughs> days, we, uh, you know, close the uh, case out. Uh, now we hope that in that time the neighbors have the chance to you know, get together and, uh, it looks like I'd like to sort of voluntary thing that we're asking you to do. It's not a lot of it. It's going to be a whole of the board of uh, and I think that will be something that you would be in agreement to. And would you sign something from the secretary indicating that you would like that? That makes a difference. That makes a difference uh, to you also that, that you're trying to work with the town. You know, what is that? So, uh, we will say it's just a second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 That's where it will be. It will be good enough. Uh, the secretary will be quite that up. Uh, so we get a copy of that. Uh, but before everyone in this, in this room uh, takes off, it's just one thing. I, I just want to reach out to Bill as, as a control officer. Uh, you see certain incidents where it's very hot and heated uh, and, and difficult to handle and, and Sometimes the best way to confuse the situation is to just to lay low and maybe not take a call, a, a, a hot call, we'll call it. Uh, but if you could please, um, uh, if there's if there's a, a, an incident that you can't take a call and you know people are trying to get in touch with you, if you could call uh, Ed or one of the people on the board for us to call and, and take the heat. It's just better than not calling back. And that's not always the case, I know. Sometimes people, we get reports, Bill didn't call, and you know, all of a sudden you'll come in with your call log, and I see that that's not true. Uh, and, and so I want to make sure that when there is a time that it's just not proper for you to, to dip the toe into the waters, uh, put the heat on us. I, I will tell you, that when, when all this happened, uh, I spoke to the police officer because it was so crazy in, yeah. in the neighborhood. I says to him, I says, go down and speak to him, I'm gonna get the dog out of here. Get it out of the truck, get it back in the shelter, get it safe. And I'll talk to him. And I asked the police officer to tell him I'll talk to him tomorrow. And that's what I did. I, I ended up with two or three calls from him during the day, but I called him later on in the afternoon after I had a chance to talk to the to, to neighbors. Because I wanted to get both stories from both people exact. I had already had the mother's story in from the police station. So it's not that I wasn't communicating with them, it's just at the time, everything was so upset and everybody was so angry that it, I, I wouldn't have had the right information that I needed at the time. I understand, Bill, and I also understand that when, when we get calls that uh, the animal control officer wasn't responsive, it's, it's not always true, it's just that their emotions can get carried away and maybe the timelines uh, are different. But if, but there is, if there is a time that you have to step back, and sometimes it's proper, uh, and if you feel like you're getting overwhelmed with call after call, uh, if you can call any one of us, uh, we can we can help out. Mr. Furlong, you jump in. I'll have a call with you in a couple of days. I don't think that's all good. What's that? Uh, okay, so. Uh, Let's, nobody else has anything to, uh, 
Can you add to this? Uh, if anybody has any future questions or comments or concerns about this matter, then uh, please contact the Board of Selections Office or you can contact me directly. Thank you. Uh, Nick Costello, Jr. 